All right, welcome back. Happy Wednesday. Hopefully you're in here wanting to find out if you got it right, right? You want to find out if you did well on last night's homework. You're hoping you got a perfect score and you're here to check your answers because if you didn't get it right, that's not the end of the world. It actually ends up being a good thing if you got it wrong and you're here right because what you do is you're finding a mistake something that you didn't know how to do and what happens then when you find it well you learn something right you learn something whenever you make a mistake if you're paying attention but if you're not checking your work when you get done and you get it wrong you don't know that that's the bad news right you, you got it wrong and you don't know it, you're more likely to do it that way again. The more times you do something right and the more times you do something wrong, it becomes a habit. It's like making a trail through the field, right? If the trail goes to the water where you want it to, every time you walk across that trail, you're making it more and more pronounced. And it gets to the point where it could be dark and you could still pretty much walk on that trail, right? Where if the trail is the wrong trail and it goes to the enemy territory or something, well, then each time you walk, you're making that trail more and more pronounced and it's hard to get off the trail to go to the right spot. So you want to immediately find out if you got something wrong. So you guys should be chomping at the bit. Can't wait to find out what the answers are the next day when you do homework. Okay. Yeah, 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 it's not being nerdy, it's being smart, okay? All right, anyway, we already went through starting this, and I put this in parentheses to make you realize that these are opposites. And when you put opposites together, when you add opposites, you get zero. So this ends up being four, right? and zero, and then minus one. So four minus one is three, okay? So I start at four, I subtract three and a half, I add three and a half, I'm back at four, Minus one is three, okay? And here, we put these together so we would know that's an eight, and there I, I owe $2 plus I have $8. I have way more than I owe. I can pay that two, and I'm still gonna have a positive six, right? And then here, we realize that there's a, a minus seven in the middle of a five, third, five and one third and a minus five and one third. Well, those cancel each other out and make zero, so all I have left here is a negative seven. Okay, all right, uh, here we go. We changed the denominators. I got three eighths plus two eighths is five eighths, right? Put a box around your answer, put a big box around all your work, right? So let's start getting used to doing that. Small box around the answer and big box around all your work. It's a great habit in math. Okay, all right, here we go over here. Two fifths is the same as six fifteenths. One third is the same as five fifteenths. Six fifteenths plus five fifteenths equals eleven fifteenths. Little box around the answer, big box around the whole problem. And on C, we said what's the least common multiple of eight and four? Well, it's eight, right? 8 times 1 is 8. That's a multiple of 8. Can you get a smaller multiple of a number that, that's smaller than that number times 1? No. And 4 times 2 is also 8. Those are multiples. Remember how you get multiples? Kind of like you're uh, counting by 4s. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. That's 4 times 1, 4 times 2, 4 times 3, 4 times 4. 8... 16, 24, 32, right? That's eight times one, eight times two. So these are multiples of eight. These are multiples of four. The smallest one that's the same is this. The next one that's the same. Now, why are all of these gonna be common? Because four fits into eight twice. So every multiple of eight is also multiple of four, okay? Every other multiple of four will be a multiple of eight. So explain how finding the least common multiple of two numbers can help you add fractions. Who got an answer for that? Hopefully you realized that when you get common 
denominators, it's just like getting common multiples of those bottom numbers. Right? When I went to get common denominators for fifths and thirds, it was the same as getting common multiple of five and three. When I got common denominator of eights and fours, it was the same as getting common multiple of eight and four. Okay. It's just, just like getting common multiples. And they often say get the least common multiple or the least common denominator, but you don't have to do that. Okay, just get something common so you can add or subtract them. You might have to simplify more, right? Uh, but sometimes you have to simplify even when you get the least. So, right? All right, here we are on 3-108. And these are number lines. It's what's strange. When you go to the ebook and you go check the answers, these are going to be flipped instead of vertical number lines. They're horizontal. I thought that was kind of strange. Okay, all right, so they want you to show how 5 minus 2 works on a number line. Well, I go to 5, I subtract 2, I'm going down, all right? If this was a horizontal, when I subtract 2, I would go left, right? So I subtract 2, 1, 2, and that leaves me with 3. Where are we? 1, 2, 3, all right? Here I start at 2, and I add 1. Right? So I'm starting at 2. I'm adding 1. I'm going up. And that leaves me at 3. Now, if this is on the number line, I'd be going to the right one spot when I add 1. That's all it is. Show how to find the answer negative 3 plus 4 minus 1. Now, I'm going to start at negative 3. Uh, I, I didn't make a number line there, huh? All right, let's just make one. Let's just use this one. Negative 3, now I'm going to do plus 4, right? So I go to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, I'm at positive 1, and that makes sense. If I owe $3 and I have $4, I can pay the 3 and I still have 1 left, right? So I'm at positive 1 now, and then I subtract 1, I'm going backwards 1, I get to 0. Now, how about a negative 4 minus 3? Now I'm starting at negative 4, and I subtract 3. i got to go that way three spots, huh? So 1, 2, 3. Where is that? That looks like it's negative 7. And that makes sense also. Remember I told you whenever you subtract integers that some kids figured out that you can just add the opposite. And they just do it on every single, every time you do integers, they get out and they say, I'm not subtracting, I'm going to add the opposite. And they always get it right. It's a good way of getting it right. So I have negative 4, that's not changing. But instead of minus 3, I'm going to add negative 3. Add the opposite. I owe 4 plus I owe 3. I owe 7. Okay? Same thing, negative 7. All right. Flip the page. We were going to look at these, and I had some kids come to me between 2.30 and 3 and ask for some help on this. Uh, approximately. Got to know what that word means. Well, what, what does that word mean? That means you get to estimate. And when you estimate, your job is to make it easy. So, 2.46 and 5, I made that 2.50 and 600. All right? Works. Some people might make it 2.40 and 600. Because 60 goes into 240 and 600. Right? If you did 250, that would simplify. You say 50 goes into that 5 times, 50 goes into 600 12 times, and you have 5 twelfths. Here, if you did 60, you'd say 60 goes into 240. Off the page a little bit. Sorry about that. 60 goes into that 4 times, and 60 goes into that 10 times. Right? Ooh, I can keep going, huh? Both of those are even. So, 4, 2 goes into 4 twice and goes into 10. So I could make this 2 fifths if you wanted, okay? If you made it 2 fifths, it was a little bit easier than 5 twelfths, 
right? Two fifths, I got that from four tenths. Four tenths can be written as a fraction or as a decimal. And remember, two spots to the right when I go to the percent, boom, boom, ends up being 40%. Draw a picture. This picture is easier than the twelfths, right? <laughs> All right, five twelfths, how do I make that a decimal? I got to divide the bottom into the top. It won't fit, Mr. Daniel. Right? Add a decimal, add a zero. Now, 4 times 12 is 48. Now, I got a remainder, so add a zero. 12 goes into 20 one time. Get a remainder, add a zero. 12 goes into 80 six times. That's 72. I got another 8. Add another zero, I get another 80. I'm going to say six again, right? And that will never end. So that six is going to repeat. So I'm going to round that. I'm going to say, since I'm going to percent, I'm going to go to this spot and say this is about 0.42. And you got to do that sometimes when you're changing a fraction to a decimal. Because you get that repeating decimal, right? That means it goes forever. You're not going to write it forever, are you? All right. So it's about... 0.42, which means it is about 42%. Now remember, that squiggly equal sign means about, okay? All right, and I'm going to write 5 twelfths because I don't want to draw the picture for 5 twelfths. <laughs> Lazy. All right, 2, 3, and then B is 3, 7. Now C is 7, 7. Remember, over first, up second. This is one of those that you can do it wrong, get it right. What if I went up first, then over second? I still get the same thing. Huh? I don't like those kind of problems when we do these. You could do it wrong, get it right. Now 8, 3. I got over 8 and up 3. Remember, over and up, over and up. <clears throat> People that use walkie-talkies are off, often saying, I need the coordinates. Compete that last. <laughs> and what shape is that? Well, this is parallel, right? Both of these are horizontal lines, but these two are not. That's called a trapezoid. Trapezoid. Hopefully you did well on this, and hopefully tonight's homework is real easy. Uh, reminder, you do the warm-up. Homework's easy. Do the warm-up and the homework. Tests are easy. Or if you're TJ, life is easy when you do those things.